हेलो एवरीवन आई एम मिस्टर सुशांत एस पाटिल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग वॉल्शन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फंक्शंस इन अ पाइथन लेट्स मूव अहेड विथ अ लर्निंग आउटकम्स एट द एंड ऑफ द सेशन स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ फंक्शंस इन अ पाइथन फंक्शंस If a group of statement is repeatedly required then it is not recommended to write this statement every time separately so we have to define this statement as a single unit and we can call that unit at any number of times based on our requirement without rewriting this unit is nothing but a function the main advantage of function is a code reusability So Python supports two types of functions. First one is built-in functions that is ID, type, input, evaluation, addition. So these are the square it. These are the built-in function. While there are some user-defined functions also there. So let us move ahead to understand a user-defined function. The function which are developed by programmer explicitly. according to business requirements are called as user defined functions syntax define function underscore name that is parameters any number of string and we have to return the value while creating the function we can use two keywords def that is a mandatory keyword and another keyword is return that can be a optional one next we are learning arguments and its types so types of argument we are to define uh, f1 a comma b so we are defining some arguments within a comma b so 5 and 10 are arguments and a and b are formal arguments where 10 and 20 are actual arguments these four types of actual arguments are allowed in python first one is positional arguments then keyword arguments next default arguments and variable length arguments so let us move ahead with the uh, this position arguments these are the arguments which are passed in a function in a correct positional order that means sub that is subtraction a comma b we are printing a minus b sub uh, 100 comma 200 and sub 200 comma 100 the number of arguments and position of arguments must be matched if we change the order then result may be changed if we change the number of arguments then we will get a error that means here order is change our answer will be change so remember this particular point in positional arguments let's move ahead keyword arguments we can pass the argument values by keyword that is by parameter name for example we are defining a wish okay so wish name comma message so hello comma name comma message wish name is equal to ajay and message is equal to good morning so wish message is equal to good morning comma name is equal to ajay so here if you observe we get a same output hello ajay good morning two times we are changing some of the things within a uh, our writing the python program so that time here the order of argument is not that much important because it is a string it is a not a integer values but the number of arguments must be match that means name and message msg those must be match next one is default arguments some we can uh, provide a default values for our positional arguments so uh, we are to define wish in bracket name is equal to guest print hello comma name again good morning and wish ajay so wish in bracket completed so here we are defining a wish as a one of the default argument and the output we get a uh, hello ajay good morning and hello guest good morning so here if you observe that there is a if we are not passing any name 
then only default value will be considered. So here default value of Ajay is considered in a name and another name is equal to guest is mentioned in the defining first function that time the default guest is also considered. So here we observe that we are not passing the same name as a defined function. Next part variable length arguments. So sometimes we can pass the variable number of arguments to our function. Such type of arguments are called variable length arguments. We can declare a variable length arguments with star symbol as follows f1 star n. So here we can call this function by passing any number of arguments including zero number also. And internally all these values represented in the form of tuple. So let's understand the example of variable length argument. We have to define the sum star n total is equal to 0 then we are using a for loop for different numbers and we are summation of different those numbers so n1 in n we are writing a total and sum is equal to total we are printing and sum sum 10 sum 10 comma 20 so as like a tuple we can add this 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 in a sum function so sum function is a star n so we can define any number of input in a sum function that is 10 comma 10 10 comma 20 if you observe first it will take 0 then it will uh, observe a loop and it will print sum is equal to 10 then it will print sum is equal to 10 plus 20 30 and then it will print sum is equal to 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 so we can mix the variable length arguments with positional arguments Let's move ahead with some examples. We have to write a function to check whether the given number is even or odd and we have to write a function for simple calculator also. So let's understand these things. So here we are observed that we are using even and odd number. So we have to define even or odd a number is in a function bracket and that number percentage 2 that means reminder of that number will be 0 and print num is a even number if reminder is not getting 0 then it will be odd number so we have to check the even number and odd number so you will get as a 10 and 15 these are calling the arguments in a defined function and that time it will follow this loop and we get 10 is a even number because reminder is 0 and 15 is a odd number because reminder is not 0 now let's move ahead with the second example of calculator by using a defined function of calculator calculator of two numbers so a comma b these are the two variables and those are arguments uh, here and we are calling a calculator as a function where sum a plus b sub subtraction a minus b multiplication a star b and division a oblique b are written sum sub multiple and division so here if you observe that we can return the statement while using a different arguments are used and we are doing a sum of our calculations so return statements are obviously used for different calculations and because it is very easy so t is another function name that where we are using a calculator of 100 comma 50 that means they, we are using these two cal, uh, numbers a and b so a is 100 and uh, 50 is b we are printing the results in a form of for loop i in t and print i that means we, it will be print all the things here now we are going to learn a uh, next part of function that is a recursive function a function that calls itself is known as a recursive function the main advantage of recursive functions are we can reduce the length of a code and improve readability. We can solve the complex problems very easily. So we have to write the function and find the factorial of a given number. Understand the recursive function. 
so in recursive function we are defining factorial and n is a num keyword argument or our variable is n if n is equal to 0 result is 1 and result n into factorial n minus 1 that means it will use again a self function of uh, factorial so here factorial n minus 1 that means n will be replaced by n minus 1 again the same function we are recalling in the if else statement and we are returning the result and here we are uh, printing the factorial number 4 and 5 so let's run this particular program here factorial of 4 is 24 and factor of 5 is 125 so here hope you understand very well the recursive function if we are writing the program without recursive function that time this same factorial program we have to write down by using a while loop and return statement then we are returning the result and for loop we are utilizing for a particular factorial of 2 3 4 so 2 6 24 these are the factorials of these numbers this factorial example is simple one and this is a recursive one because this function is calling itself okay hope you understand very well of recursive function these are some of the references thank you